Hello guys, in today's video, we will discuss about uh, BSOF, how to solve BSOF in an Excel file. But before that, let's understand the model. Let's understand that what is BSOF model. Okay, now you can only understand this theory if you know about share options, if you have an idea about share options. Now, whether you go to a, a stock market or whether you go to a currency market or commodity market, in every market, you will you, you will see the term options. Okay, now let's say you're planning to buy the shares. Now, why do we buy the shares? So that we can make a gain, right? Now let's suppose, for example, that uh, let's say I want to buy 1000 shares of company X. Okay, I want to buy 1000 shares of company X. Now let's say right now those shares are trading at $300. Okay, they're trading at $300. Now in the future, it could be possible that share price may increase, right? So let's say today I'm buying the shares for $300. Okay, so in the future, the share price can increase, right? So it means that I can earn a gain. But in the future, it is also possible that share price may fall this share price, which is right now 300, it can fall, right? So if it falls, so you will incur a loss. Okay. So that is a problem with uh, shares. Like if I just go and uh, buy the shares in the market, so I will face this problem, right? So if the share price increases, so I will have a gain or if it decreases, so I will incur a loss. Now, the same goes in, uh, in case if let's say, if you want to make investment in dollar. So again, why do we make investment in dollar so that i can make a gain right now let's say i want to buy 100 dollar let's say i bought 100 dollar and right now let's suppose the exchange rate is 125 okay so it means that my total investment would be 125 000, right now you know in the future it could be possible that dollar prices may go up so today i have bought the dollar for how much 125 right so this dollar rate might go up in the future if this rate go up in the future so i will earn again right i will make a gain but similarly it is also possible that dollar prices may go down so it means that i might incur a loss as well so this is the natural problem of these transactions Okay, so in case of shares, there is a risk of fallen share price. Okay, and in case of dollar, there is a, a risk of fallen dollar rates. Okay, so because of this, you know, in every market, there's an option to purchase share option. So instead of buying or selling the shares, what you can do is you can take the right. You can take the option to buy or sell the shares. Okay, now let's say, let's say today I, 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 I am not buying these thousand shares today. I'm not buying them. But what I did was that I take an option to buy 1000 shares at a rate of 300. So I'm not taking the shares today. I'm not buying the shares today, but I've just taken an option to buy the shares. I have taken a call option, right? Right to buy means that you have taken a call option. So let's say you have taken a call option. So you have a call option to buy how many shares? 1000 shares at a rate of 300. Now in the future, if the share price increases, okay, if the share price increases, let's say the share price increases to 330. Okay, it increases to 330. So uh, you have an option to buy at 300, right? So in the market, if the share price increases, so now I will exercise my right. Because what does exercising the right means? Exercising the right means that I can buy the shares at $300, right? Because I have taken an option in day one. And because of that option, I'm able to buy the shares at a fixed price of 300. Now, whether the share price in the market increases or decreases, I, I can buy the shares at a fixed price of 300. So this time the share price in the market have increased. 
So definitely I will buy the shares, right? I will exercise the option. Exercising the option means that I will buy the shares for 300. And then I will go and I will sell it in the market for 330 because the rate in the market is 330, right? But just because I have the option, so because of that, I'm able to buy those shares for 300. So I will buy those shares for 300 and then I can go and sell it in the market for 330. You can make a gain this way, right? Now, it could also be possible that let's say maybe in the future, the share price have decreased. It has decreased to 290. Okay, it has decreased to 290. So if I exercise the option, what does it mean? That I have to buy those shares for 300, right? Because I have an option, right? I have an option. And because of that option, I can buy the shares at a fixed price of 300. So this time the rate in the market is 290. So will you exercise the option? Obviously no, because exercising the option means that I have to buy them for 300. So why will I buy, buy them for 300 when, when the same thing in the market is trading at 290? So I won't go and exercise the option, right? I will not exercise the option. This time I will lapse the option because there is uh, because if i exercise options so i will incur a loss right so i will labs option i will leave it okay now you must be wondering that how is it possible that when there was a gain so we were exercising the option and we were enjoying all the gain and when there was a loss so uh, i told you that what we can do is we can leave the option we can labs option so that we don't incur a loss how is uh, how is this, uh, how is that thing possible now you must be wondering about counterparty, right? You must be wondering that what benefit the counterparty will have, right? So now, you know, uh, remember one thing that you have to pay a premium. Okay, the counterparty, they will demand a premium. Okay, so whenever you enter into an option agreement, so initially the counterparty will demand a premium. So you have to pay a premium. Okay, now this premium will be paid in day one. Okay, and this is non-refundable. So now whether you exercise the option or you lapses, still you have to pay the premium. Okay, it's non-refundable. Now it's totally up to you whether you want to exercise it or you want to lapse option. And you know, because of this payment of premium, we say that options are very expensive. Okay. All right, now, so you have to pay the premium, right? So even if I lapse the option, so still counterparty, they will receive the premium, right? And you know, nowadays this option pricing uh, model, the, uh, these are very famous and it is even used by the airline. Like if you look, uh, look at Emirates website or American uh, airline website. So uh, let's say if you want to book an airline ticket for from, uh, let's say maybe from UAE to uh, UK. Okay, now let's suppose, uh, assuming that the price of the ticket is $10,000, just an assumption, like it's $10,000. Now we know that ticket prices, they keep on fluctuating. So if it increases to, uh, let's say 15,000, so I will feel very happy because I bought those, uh, those tickets for 10,000. And now they have the price have been increased to 15,000. So I will be happy about it, right? But just imagine that if the ticket price decreases, let's say if it decreases to 9,000, so you will face a loss, right? So now in order to save yourself uh, from this uh, price fluctuation, what you can do is you can buy an option. The airline, they will give you an option. So I will not buy the ticket, but I will take an option to buy the ticket for a particular date. Okay. Now, uh, you know, uh, you must be wondering that whenever we take option, we have to pay premium, right? So for premium, remember one thing that premium is dependent upon the um, time period. Okay, it depends upon the time period. Let's say if I tell them that I will leave after one week, so they will tell you the premium accordingly. They will, they will do the calculation and they will tell you the premium accordingly. But if I tell them that if uh, I want to leave after two weeks, so now premium will be different. Okay. So it means that the premium will be different according to the time period. Okay. And also these options, they will have an expiry. 
okay they will be having an expiry let's say it has an expiry of five days okay so during those five days let's say if the price increases so i will exercise the option otherwise i will lapse the option okay so initially you have to uh, pay the premium okay now the question is that how this premium is computed how can we compute this premium amount so that we can compute with the help of bsoft black shoal option pricing model okay so it will be computed with the help of bsoft so bsoft it has some formula and with the help of that it will tell you that how much premium you have to pay but remember one thing that this premium is dependent upon the time period okay if you take the option for one week its premium will be different if you take it for two weeks its premium will be different if you take it for one month again its premium will be different okay now uh, before we move on to the calculation side uh, now uh, basically you have to remember that um, for, for for the purpose of excel you need to uh, remember few functions and the command for those functions like if you want to use a square root in an excel file so you will use the formula is equals to sqrt okay you have to use this command so you have to learn them it is not given in the exam similarly if you want to use natural log so for that uh, we we will use the command ln and then for exponential it is exp and if you want to find out the value of nd1 so for that you will use the command norms test in the bra uh, bracket open d1 so we'll see how to apply these command okay now let's take an example let's say this is an example question for you um where pa that is 100 now what is pa that is the current share price uh then pe it is 95 pe that is the exercise price and remember one thing that exercise price is the fixed price it will not change okay so this is something which will remain fixed uh then is that is your standard deviation it is 50% so i have written 0.5 then r that is your risk free rate that is 10% so i have written 0.1 t that is time to expiry Uh, that is three months. So you have to convert those three months into year. So it will be point two five. Okay, to point two five. I have converted this thing into year. It was three months. So it will be point two five. Three divided by twelve. Okay, now over here you have to find out the value of call option. Now in order to find out the value of call option, you need uh, four things. You need to find out four things. Number one, you you have to find out the value of D one. then d2 then nd1 then nd2 and then finally you will find out the value of call option uh, now for d1 we have a formula now that formula is already given in the exam so if we just look at this formula over here uh, what is the formula it is ln into pa divided by pe plus r plus 0.5 into s to the power of 2 then multiplied by t then this will be divided by s square root of t so this is the formula for d1 so let's compute d1 first okay so you will put an equal sign over here okay now you will open a bracket over here and you will write down ln natural log okay so you will use your tab button Okay, now ln. What was the formula? Ln into pa divided by pe, right? So pa that is over here. It's hundred. So I will give the reference of this cell. So it will be hundred divided by pe. Pe is ninety five, right? So again, you will give the reference of the cell. Pe. Okay, now you will close the bracket. So it was ln into pa divided by pe. Now plus. Now again, you will open the bracket. now what was the formula after that r r is 0.1 right so i will give the reference of the uh, cell r plus it was 0.5 right 0.5 so i'm writing 0.5 over here then it will be multiplied by 
s to the power of 2 right s to the power of 2 so s is over here it's 0.5 okay now to the power of 2 now you will use your power sign to the power of then you will write down 2 over here bracket close okay now this whole numerator this was multiplied by t right so you will multiply with t which is 0.25 okay now you will close the bracket because this is all that you have in the numerator right so you have to close the bracket for this now you will divide this thing now comes the denominator side now in the denominator what was the formula it was s square root of t right s square root of t so again i will be using a bracket and you will open the bracket first now it was s right so s is 0.5 into square root of t so for square root i told you that you have to use the command s q r t so just use your tab button okay s q r t okay now it was square root of t right so t is 0.25 so i will give the reference of the cell now you will close the bracket okay again you will close the bracket because that's all we have in the denominator okay now you could press enter so it means that your d1 is 0.43 now remember one thing that d1 it should be strictly to two decimal places okay you have to remember this thing okay now next let's compute the value of d2 so let's look at the formula for d2 first so this is the formula for d2 it is d1 minus s square root of t okay so is equals to d1 d1 this is your d1 0.43 minus s square root of t right so i will open the bracket first s is 0.5 into square root again for square root you will use the command s q r t okay so, so this uh, now it is square root of t right so t is 0.25 so you will give the reference of this cell okay now you will close your bracket okay again you will close your bracket so it means your t2 that will be 0.18 okay now let's compute the value of nd1 now uh, if you solve this thing in your uh, if you solve this thing manually so what is the formula for computing nd1 it is 0 0.5 plus uh, the normal distribution value of d1 right we look at the normal distribution table um, uh, uh, we, uh, we look for the value of d1 right like over here the value of d1 is 0.43 so you will look at your normal distribution table with a row of 0.4 and a column of 0 0.03 that's how we look at the normal uh, distribution value of d1 right and then we add 0 0.5 to it why do we add 0 0.5 to it because the normal distribution table which is given in the exam that is half all right but now over here you don't have to look at normal distribution table you will simply apply the formula and it will automatically generate the value of nd1 okay now let's use the formula so is equals to norms dist d i s t okay then okay norms dist so i have to find out the normal distribution value of d1 right so you will give the reference of d1 which is 0.43 Okay, now you will close the bracket. So what is the value of ND1? 0.665. So it's very easy. You don't have to look at normal distribution table and you don't even have to add 0.5 to it. Okay, you will simply use the formula norms dist. That's it. Okay, now similarly, if you want to find out the value of ND2. So again, what you will do is you will use the formula norms dist okay now we we want to find out the uh, normal distribution value for d2 so what is the value of d2 0.18 right so i will give the reference of this cell 0.18 break it close so it means the value of nd2 will be 0.5715 okay 
now all both of these things needs to be uh, in it should be in four decimal places it, it should be close to four decimal places okay now that we have the value of d1 d2 nd1 and nd2 now we will find out the value of call option so let's look at the formula for computing the value of call option this is the formula p a into nd1 minus p e into nd2 into e that is exponential component e is your exponential component to the power of minus rt this is the formula now what is this e to the power minus rt this is basically b sub discount factor okay so let's find out the value of call option let's use the formula so is equals to what is the formula pa right so you will open the bracket first pa pa is 100 so 100 into nd1 so nd1 that we have already computed that is 0. 0.6665 so just give the reference of this cell okay now close your bracket okay pa into nd1 now you will close your bracket now you will use a minus sign over here now again you will open the bracket and now it was pe right pe is 95 so pe into nd2 so nd2 is 0.5715 so i will give the reference of this cell 0.5715 now it was being multiplied by e to the power of minus rt right e to the power of minus rt so e is exponential component so for e you will use a formula so firstly you will use your multiply sign now you will write down e xp exponential component okay uh, you will use use a tap button okay now it was e to the power of minus rt right okay now you don't have to use any power sign over here because that is already built in in this formula when you will write down e uh, exp so um, they will automatically uh, and in the uh, in the power they will auto, uh, they will automatically take the number in the power okay so you will just use a negative sign over here because it was e minus rt right e minus rt okay so i will just use a negative sign over here there's no need to use the power sign over here okay okay so you will just use a negative sign over here then it was rt right r is 0.1 into t t is 0.25 okay now you will close your bracket okay now again you will you uh, you will close your bracket okay because that bracket was for the formula so we have closed the formula and now again you, you have to close this whole thing okay so you will again use a bracket over here now please press enter so it means the value of call option is 13.7 okay so that is how you have to use your excel for computing piece of uh, value okay so I hope you guys liked the video. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.